My name is Jacobina Kigio Nashikwere. I was born in Okatakomatemo, which is a village that is around about 15 to 10 kilometers away from Mandangwa, towards Chicago. I grew up in Arandis, that's where I grew up, and um, I'm a full-time architecture student and an artist. My life as an artist started at a very, very early age. Um, I'd say it was around about the age of seven to yeah, seven to eight years. I started with making beads, just jewelry, starting off making bracelets and make, creating different patterns with that. And um, how it evolved from that is I started sketching, but I didn't consider myself as an artist then. I just started doodling in my sketchbook and, and that I kept to myself, I didn't really show anyone. So, um, with as years went by, I started showing friends and family, and people could see that I was doing something great. So I decided to pursue that and just not take it as a hobby anymore, and actually do more with it. So over the past two years, over the past two years, I've come across oil painting, acrylics. I did a I tried a few newspaper stuff because I used to uh, wet the newspaper and mold it like clay into different like pots and stuff. So I also did that at home. Um, but currently what I am doing now is acrylics. I'm fascinated about acrylics so I love the fact that it gels so well with water. So and the fact that it dries up so fast it just gets my mind going. So acrylics is what I'm fascinated about and it's the medium that I've been using for the longest as I remember. My journey as an artist and as an yeah my journey as an artist and an architecture student relatively started at the same time. Because when I started doing art that's when I decided I was going to study architecture. So for me architecture is also art. It's 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 also a form of design and one needs a creative mindset to, to do it. So um, Currently, I'm in my second year of doing architecture, and I'm loving it. I am fascinated about it, and it correlates quite well with my life as an artist. Um, having that the design process behind it is quite similar to what I have to do. And it, designing a house is quite similar to creating a painting. You have to look at the foreground, the background, what's in the middle, what are you focusing on? And it's the same thing with painting, you have to focus on the background, what, what is the subject, what is the subject telling you, um, what is before the subject, what is the subject the main, you know, um, element of the painting. So architecture and being an artist correlates so perfectly and it took me a while to realize and actually put what I do as an, art, and as a, as an artist into architecture and what I do as an architecture student into my art, so they correlate quite well, and um, yeah, I'm loving it. In this painting, like you've seen, there's quite a lot of wash with the acrylic, so I, I get to get the wash with the acrylic, because with oil it's quite expensive if you were to use an oil medium to get the wash. So um, here it's much more of a lucid um, flow, and then here it's much more of a saturated one, as you can see, like it's more darker because there's more paint to it. Here it's more water than there is paint. And uh, the whole um, story behind the fabric was to kind of create movement in the painting and just have this still, still movement basically. So I decided to take the fabric because then with the folds you can still see that there's some form of movement, but then it's still still. So with this one you can see that it's more a technique that I use in my older version, which is more colorful and more playful. Although there is some form of movement with the water, it's still very stagnant with the face, because um, the face is much more rigid. If you look at this, this is much more flowy than this one being a bit rigid, so yeah. So, summing up to where I started to where I am now, I can say that um, when I started off, I was just painting. I didn't have a concept to it and the more I painted and the more people I met, as a, more artists I met especially, I realized that I need to have a story behind my paintings, I need to be telling a story 
because it's one thing to create something that's beautiful and that everyone likes like, oh, I love it, but you must have a story. And like I said earlier, we must create platforms in which we tell our own stories and our own perspective of life and the way the things that are going. So now at this current stage, I think my paintings have evolved in the form that they tell a story and they evoke a certain form of emotion. And um, my aim is to create, like I said, um, it's to evoke the conscious mindset and it's to just trigger a feeling of humanity, kindness, love. That is, that is my feeling. So with my painting and, and as the way I go about it, um, when I started off, my main subject were female with closed eyes because I feel like um, the fact that I'm evoking a feeling, feeling is not something that you see, it's something that you feel, so you need to close your eyes to properly feel it. So that was the concept behind it because most of them had clo um, their eyes closed. So that was the feeling, uh, that was a notion behind it, having their eyes closed, that they feel and they don't see. So you seeing, it's not you feeling, it's a totally different thing. I can see you, but do I feel you? Do you understand what I'm saying? So there were female, because I feel like everyone has a female figure in their life. It doesn't matter if you were raised only by your dad. You might have an aunt, you might have a female friend. There's always this female figure in one's life. And if there isn't, you always, always feel the absence of a female figure in your life. Because we all came from females, and that's a fact. And this, that maternal connection to motherhood and womanhood. So, yeah. But at this point, my um, technique has changed, and it has loosened up quite well, quite a lot. Because I now mix um, acrylic with water, because it's also awesome me. And that is one of the fascinating things that I love about it, that I can just dim it down. And um, with, with that looseness, it creates a much more deeper atmosphere of the painting itself and the subject that I'm trying to focus on. I had initially thought of making the newspaper page. Because then there's like three whole paintings underneath that painting. Just because of the process and me not feeling it and then me trying something else and then I'm like, oh, I don't want that. So there's like three old paintings underneath that painting. So, um, to give a visual example of the transformation from my late pieces to now my current pieces, um, you can look at Unstable Father. Unstable Father was was a technique that I used in most of my previous pieces. It was more bright and colorful, and there was just so much going on in them. And um, if you look at the other one, Serenity, Serenity would be a much uh, updated version of my technique as I have loosened up quite a lot and I used quite a lot of water. As much paint as I used water, if not more. I think I've used more water than paint in, in um, Serenity, but you can see the difference in the atmosphere that both of the paintings are creating. It is quite similar. I've not, in terms of atmosphere, I've not um, changed quite a lot. But in terms of the technique that I use and the mediums that I use and how bright uh, my colors are, that has changed up quite a lot. And I see the progression in that. The person or the people that inspire me the most, I say, first of all, would obviously be Bob Marley. For everyone, for anyone that knows me, I I love Bob Marley. I love his music. I love what he stands for. He speaks the truth, and he's all about Africa as I am, because Africa is home. And um, so, by listening to his music, I'm always provoked by certain thoughts that I come up with. I'm, I'm always challenged by his music because every time I listen to it, I, I feel something different and uh, different thoughts pop up. And, it's, and it's, it's just not that the music is so smoothing, but mentally it questions quite a lot of things that are happening currently. So that would be my biggest inspiration. If I listen to Bob Mali, I, am, I, I feel alive. Um, people like Hal Selassie and Thomas and Kara are also people that motivate me quite a lot, because if someone could die for what they lived for, why can't we live for what they died for? So, 
my dad is also my biggest inspiration, but in terms of artistically where I get my inspiration is when I speak to fellow, my fellow brothers and sisters, but, but the way they speak, their eyes, the way they are passionate about whatever they are speaking, there is something to it. The other thing that inspires me a great deal would be nature. When, when you are surrounded by nature, there's just a certain form of presence that you have to acknowledge, which I feel is God. So uh, that is my biggest inspiration. I feel like he's the best artist possible. There's no one that can replicate or duplicate whatever it is that he has already created. You just have to get from it, but you can never recreate what he created. So that would be my biggest inspiration and basically my role model. Because if I can blend a sky as beautifully as he has blended, I will create as an artist. Thank you for watching. Your views and opinions will grow the progressive artist. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more creative content.